Do you want to gain more power and spin on your serve? Hey, this is Maribana Ranchout, host of Tennis Summit 2022. And today I've got a free preview session for you from Tennis Summit 2022, uh, the biggest online tennis conference in the world that's happening starting on April 18th. And this preview session is about your biggest serve power leaks with coach Jeff Salzenstein. And if you want to watch the full length session of this video, plus 40 plus others with top coaches such as Rick Macy, Paul Anacone, Jeff Salzenstein, Ryan Reedy, Will Hamilton, Ian Westerman, and many other coaches, then click the link below this video or go to tennisfilesummit.com to get your free ticket. Now let's get into the video. Hey, it's Jeff Salzenstein here. I'm the founder of Tennis Evolution, and I am excited to bring this lesson to you today because I get to talk about and teach on one of my favorite topics. It's the serve, and we're gonna specifically focus on power leaks, ways that you could be losing power on your serve. I'm going to give you seven specific examples, seven ways you could be losing power on your serve. We're gonna break it down for you right now, and I wanna start with the grip. Nice up close personal to the camera so that we can show the grip. So here's the situation. Some of you still have a forehand grip and you've probably heard it before. And if you haven't heard it before, pay attention because what you wanna focus on is switching to a continental grip. So you're gonna go from a forehand grip to a continental grip. Now, why would we do that? I'm gonna back up for a moment here and then I'll come back closer in a moment. Uh, if you have a forehand grip, you can only swing forward like this, straight forward in more of a linear fashion. But if you're able to switch to a continental grip, you're gonna change your entire swing path and be able to impart spin on the ball as you're swinging. So this swing path, if you're a right-hander, is gonna go, I'll do it as a right-hander here, it's gonna go from left to right, okay? If you're a lefty, it's gonna go from right to left but it's not gonna go forward. That patty cake, pancake, frying pan uh, grip is going to create a swing path where you're sw swinging straight towards the target. And you can hit it with a decent amount of speed, but you will be limited. You won't be able to kind of cross over that threshold where you can hit faster, you can create more pace, and more importantly, create the spin that you want on the ball. So you've gotta commit to switching to that continental grip. Now, there's a few other things with the grip that I have to talk about right now that is often overlooked. Number one, if you're holding what I call a block grip, you see this right here? Check your, next time you serve, see how you're holding the racket. Is your index finger scrunched together with your other fingers like this? Are you trying to serve like this? Because if you are, you're losing power. You're creating too much tension when you swing. So what you wanna practice doing is spreading the index finger, okay? That's that trigger finger, you wanna spread the index finger. This gives you more play, okay? You have more feel with your hand and with your wrist and you're able to accelerate the racket and create that whip-like effect. If you're holding it like this, you're gonna be uh, tense and tight. And actually, when you start your serve, one little clue that I look for with players is when they start the serve and the racket is really cocked up like this, I'll often see that block grip. And I'll also see a very tight wrist. So you gotta make sure that you loosen up your hand too on the grip, because if you spread that trigger finger, then you can start like this, where the wrist is a little more relaxed and the racket face is going to be down more instead of cocked up. Now, no another thing you need to pay attention to is how low you hold the racket. So many of you are choked up on the racket like this, then you can't let the racket do the talking, okay? We want the racket to do the talking, and in order to do that, you've gotta move your hand down. I like to have my pinky just on the edge of the racket like this. And then you can see the heel of the hand is off of the racket. That's again, very important to keep that, that arm loose and to create that, that whip-like effect and that ability just to let the racket head do more work for you. The more you're choked up, the more you're gonna muscle and try to control things. So try to get in that continental grip, focus on that trigger finger spreading out and lower your hand on the racket. All these things can avoid this power leak grip that you might be struggling with. Now let's get into the power leaking first move. If you have a first move that's inefficient, good luck getting the power that you want 
on your serve. So I'm a big proponent of focusing on that initial move when you serve because if you get going in the wrong direction from the beginning, it's hard to make up for it. It's kind of like driving down a highway and if you get off at the one exit and you take that wrong exit, now your swing path, the way that you load, the way that you go up to the ball, uh, the way that you make contact, it's all impacted by how you start. So I'm gonna come up to the baseline here and show you a little bit more of what I'm talking about. So when you get set up in your stance, it's very important that you're, that you're clear on how you're going to start the swing. Now assuming that you have a continental grip, because if you don't have a continental grip, you can throw everything I'm about to say out, okay? Because with a forehand grip, you're not going to be able to load and coil and make this initial move the way that I'm about to show you. So here's the key. You get into your motion, or you get into your stance. It doesn't matter if you have a platform stance or a pinpoint stance. You can hit big serves with both stances. But what I see often is that players, they go down together, up together with their arms. That classic myth or mistake that you've heard for years, you know, start your swing down together, up together. Now what happens when you go down together, up together like this, what do you notice about my, what do you notice my arms doing compared to my body? What's moving more? Yes, my arms are moving more and my body is moving less. We actually want the opposite effect to get more power on the serve. So to avoid power leaks, we wanna focus on working on turning at the beginning of the motion. Now, this is not a hard, fast rule, okay? You don't have to do it like this. If you get plenty of power, you can ignore what I'm saying. I want you to challenge what I'm trying to teach you here. You do not have to accept it as truth. What I like as a basic framework, again, everybody's different, but as a basic framework, is that when you start the motion, what is moving first? My shoulders are moving first. So instead of my arms moving first, my shoulders move, and I want you to also notice my hips are moving a little bit too. So I've got a little bit of turn in my shoulders and my, in, in my, in my hips, and that's gonna allow me to load into my back leg easier. It's gonna allow me to coil easier on my serve, and the coil and the rotation, that loading is what's going to allow you to get more power instead of just using your arms Okay, using your arms and squatting down, now you're not using that kinetic chain. You're not connecting the lower body to the upper body. And so many players struggle with this. This is one of the biggest power leaks that I want you to focus on. Next up, we're gonna focus on the power leaking stance. That's right. If your stance is not solid, you're going to leak power out of your serve. And so what I like to do is get players in a comfortable stance. My first choice, is a platform stance. So when you're in a platform stance, this back foot is going to be staggered. Now it can vary, it can be narrow, it can be wider. Uh, you just wanna make sure that you're able to push into the ground off of both feet, which a lot of players struggle with. And at Tennis Evolution, we really focus on helping players, not only on the court, but off the court with corrective exercises to help them be able to load the back leg and even load the front leg appropriately. So what I see a lot of is when players get ready to serve, they'll shift their weight very early to the front foot. So the entire motion and the entire serve is off of the front foot. Again, you can still hit with power off of the front foot, but it's more efficient and uh, easier. I shouldn't say easier. It's more efficient if you can learn how to load the back leg before you accelerate up to the ball. Now, a lot of players ask me, well, what's the percentage of load from the back leg to the front leg? Well, it varies depending on where you are in the serve. The key is to get more load in the back leg. I would say 80 to 90% of players get too much weight on the front leg too early, even when they have a pinpoint stance. So if you bring your back foot up, I would even encourage you to learn how to drive off of the back foot. I rarely see players able to push off of both feet appropriately, okay? Some other things that I see that uh, cause problems or power leaks with the stance and even this initial motion of the serve. The first thing I'll see is with a, with a pinpoint stance, I'll see players bring the back foot up to the side like this, and there's absolutely no push off the back foot, and there's no turn or coil. And then they end up serving and they're facing the net 
when they go to hit the surf. That's again why I like this, that this foot back in this position for the platform so you can load the platform stance or if you, if you move your back foot up to a pinpoint, you bring it up behind the front foot instead of to the side of the front foot. All of this is going to create a power leak and gonna create more strain on your shoulder if you bring your back foot up to the side. I've got a few, few more things I wanna share. I see players when they toss the ball, they immediately go up on their tippy toes on the front foot or the back foot. So they might, they might just lift the front foot like this and they have no drive off of the back leg or excuse me, off of the front leg or they may toss the ball in the air and have no weight on the back leg. Either one is, in, is more inefficient and it could be leaking power because power comes from the ground. The ability to drive off of the ground and rotate and you have to train this, you have to train it on the court and you have to train it off the court with corrective exercises. Heck, when I see players, some high level elite pros serve, they still toss the ball and they might twist their foot like this and when they twist, they're not able to push either. They might twist this way, they might twist this way, and they're not able to drive. They're not able to get their knee over their toe like this and push. They're, they're, they're misaligned, if you will. So it's so important to get the right stance set up. And I see some players, one last thing I wanna mention about the stance, I see some players when they start their motion, they're in their stance, and this could, be, this could fall into the first move category as well they will bend their knees at the beginning and then straighten as they toss. I call it a reverse knee bend. So instead of staying straighter at the beginning and then bending, they will actually, they will actually bend and then straighten as they toss. So it's that reverse knee bend. So that combination of the stance and the first move really sets you up for success or failure and really sets you up to, it will determine whether you get more power or whether you're leaking power. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. And if you did, then go to tennisfilesummit.com to pick up your free ticket to watch this session in full, plus over 40 world-class coaches presenting on technique, strategy, fitness, and the mental game at tennisfilesummit.com. See you at the summit.